When I was still a child, my parents went to the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca. And when they came back, they brought date fruits, prayer rugs, these weird things, some other random stuff, and, uh, water. Water. Yes, water. They brought water. From Saudi Arabia to Germany, they brought water. They brought water to Germany on a six-hour flight from Saudi Arabia. And when they brought that water, it was stored at a very special place, supposed to be used only in very special cases. Drinking with restrictions, not whenever you are thirsty. And not to brush your teeth, sprinkle your body, or wash your butt. At least when I drank it by mistake, no one told me to spit it out. But you get the idea, it was special water. When we drank it, we were reminded explicitly to remember Allah and to turn towards the Kaaba while drinking it, and to make a prayer when we are done. And we should never waste it. All of that was quite odd to me at that age, and I saw the same thing among relatives and among other people, among uh, religious friends of my parents. Later, when I devoted myself to Islam, I understood further that this water is very holy. All that awkward behavior over some water is quite interesting, so let's give some context here. It is called Zamzam water and comes from a well in Mecca, only a few meters away from the Kaaba. According to Islamic belief, Abraham's second wife Hagar was left in the desert by Abraham together with their son Ishmael. When Hagar ran out of water for the little kid, she became desperate and started walking around between two hills looking for help in the middle of the desert while praying to God. Those two locations are claimed to be known today and are called Safa and Marwa. Her desperate walk between those two points is weirdly practiced during the pilgrimage by every Muslim. Anyway, she was desperate, and while she was in despair, and came back to Ishmael, she suddenly saw that water came out from below Ishmael's feet. According to some stories, Ishmael scraped the ground with his feet. In other sources, Gabriel came and caused that well of water. When Hagar had enough, apparently she told the water to stop. She's talking to water. Uh, and that stop command is translated from zum zum, stop, stop, which led to the name of the water well, zum zum. Muslims believe that this story happened right next to where the Kaaba stands, which was built later by Abraham and Ishmael. All of this is quite weird, because the same story is mentioned in the Bible, but you will quickly notice that the Islamic story is sort of, um, a rip-off of that biblical story. Of course, you don't know that when you're a Muslim because you are discouraged from reading the Bible or even touching it because it has been corrupted. According to the Bible, Abraham's concubine, not second wife, Hagar, was sent and not left by Abraham together with their son Ishmael to a wilderness that is, however, nowhere near Mecca. According to the Bible, that place is the Desert of Paran. Now, the Desert of Paran is mentioned in some Bible verses, and considering that Abraham lived in Beersheba at that time, which is in Palestine, it would be very illogical and nonsensical if Abraham sent his concubine from here to, uh, here. The desert of Paran is described in the Bible as a place close to some other places, Araba, Suf, Tophel, Laban, Hazaroth, Dizahab. All these places are around here, not around here. So in the Bible, where the story originates, the desert of Paran is around Palestine and Jordan, not down here. What's also interesting is that in the Bible, the two continue to live in the desert of Paran, and Hagar later gets her son Ishmael, a wife from Egypt, which is here. Imagine her going to Egypt for a wife from here. 
compared to here. Also, in the Bible, the well doesn't have such a huge significance, except that God gave it to Hagar so that she could feed her child. If we come back to Islam, however, the Zamzam well is so big, so significant, so miraculous, that it would have flooded the earth and caused a river if Hagar didn't intervene and stop it. That's what Hadith say. Bad Hagar. But hey, that's nothing. Look what the Hadith say about the Zamzam water. According to Islamic belief, you should drink the Zamzam water as a Muslim. That means basically mostly you have to, because in Islam you want to be liked by Allah and Muhammad. Muhammad even called people who don't drink the Zamzam water hypocrites, in that the difference between a, a believer and a hypocrite is the drinking or or not drinking of the Zamzam water. It's <laughs> water. Moreover, according to Islam, the Zamzam water is the best water in the world. The best of all. It is also thought and believed to heal diseases and sickness because it's such a miraculous water. According to Islam, Zamzam water can quench your thirst and feed you which means it can be a substitute for food. According to that logic, you could survive for a very long time just by drinking that water without eating any food, and you wouldn't have very much loss. In fact, according to an authentic Islamic narration, a man spent 40 days and nights, which could be considered figurative speech for a very long time of over weeks, just drinking the Zamzam water. He was very healthy and had no complaints at all. In fact, he got so fat from drinking the water that he had folds of fat on his stomach and no hunger and tiredness at all. Screw science. Muhammad didn't say screw science. He said, verily, it is blessed. It is food that nourishes. So, in other words, screw science. Okay, seriously, if anyone wants to do this, I mean, if anyone really believes that this is true and wants to prove it to us all, and wants to do it, then... Look, I'm not Hitler just because I have a German accent. I don't want genocides. But if you really want to try that, if you really want to do that, then... <sighs> Go ahead and please report back to us after over a month, if you can. I assure you, something miraculous will happen, and you won't witness that completely. What is even funnier is that Islam wants you to believe, or that many Muslims do believe, that the Zamzam water not drying out, flowing, and being in the middle of the desert is some kind of miracle. But here's a short lesson about water wells, which many people don't really understand, because who really cares about water wells, right? I can't blame you. Water is everywhere in the deserts. If you go and try to learn about how water wells form, you will learn that everywhere, even under a dry desert, there is water underground that you, that you can obtain by digging and using different techniques. So, a water well in the desert is not a miracle, although in old mythologies people thought that that was a miracle and a very weird thing. A well flowing in the desert is not a miracle. If we look at water wells scientifically, we see that they are supported by very many natural factors, such as rain that collects underground and can be obtained above the ground as pure water, which will also take some of the characteristics of the ground that it interacts with. It is rainwater that is absorbed and becomes available above the ground by digging. A well not drying out in the desert could be considered normal, or in some cases impressive, but it's certainly not a miracle. 
is said a well even in the desert is formed under completely natural circumstances. And today, the Zamzam well is pumped and drawn out by electric pumps, which make the water flow even more. That's not a miracle. In fact, there are more other wells that Arabs created by themselves, and they are in no way different from the Zamzam well, and share similar characteristics, because they are also absorbed by the desert and offered as water that give you a distinct taste, different from water in more humid areas like Western Europe, for example. I know all of this because I'm a medical doctor. No, I know all of this because it's publicly available information. I'm not a medical doctor. Zakir Naik is a medical doctor. What is also publicly available information is that the Zamzam water was tested at different times at different places by different people. And in some completely different, unrelated cases, it was found that the water contains dangerous amounts of toxic bacteria and chemicals, while other studies at other times by other people found the water to be completely fine and normal to drink, without any huge, miraculous, extremely, enormously healthy specifications. Of course, if you look at Islamic sources, they will ignore all the bad results and disqualify them like geniuses, and will only give you the good results, like those shared in Saudi Arabia by the authorities, for some reason. I can't really figure out why they would hide the bad ones and take only the good ones. It's a mystery. As a conclusion, there is not much special about the Zamzam water. There is actually nothing special. There is nothing very good and great about the Zamzam water. It's water. And the background story about Hagar in the desert of Arabia seems more of a fabrication. It's mythology based on the Bible. Treating it like Allah's special cocktail for you just seems ridiculous from, from an enlightened point of view compared to a mythological point of view. Carrying it around the world to feed your children with it, it's... <laughs> that's odd, to say the least. And if you want to drink it that way and you want to drink water while turning to the Kaaba, at least don't treat it like it's coming from Allah's hand, specifically offered to you. And if you want to treat it that way, you, you, you can totally do that. But at least don't try and tell other people that there is something holy and beautiful and wonderful and miraculous and great about it, while completely disregarding science and common sense, and then blaming others because they don't believe your ridiculous side of the story. The Sunnah and the admiration for Islam and Allah and Muhammad doesn't substitute science. It just makes you look weird. It's, it's water. We have plenty of it in the world. We have a lot of it in the world. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, to subscribe, and to share. If you want to support my cause of enlightening people about the reality behind Islam, you can support <coughs> you can support me on Patreon or PayPal through the links in the description. Thanks for all kinds of support. Think about the future of your children. Please don't waste your time and don't waste the time of others. Stay